In this video, we are going to see about how to create a pipeline in Microsoft Fabric to copy a file from Azure Data Lake to One Lake Data Storage in Fabric. We will also be discussing different things in this video like setting up the Lakehouse database and how we can load a Delta file to the table format and all other data factory stuff that we could do with Microsoft Fabric. So without wasting further time, let's get started. Okay, so I have already posted two videos about Microsoft Fabric. One is about its complete introduction in detail and the other one is about how to create and enable Microsoft Fabric. So if you haven't watched those two videos, I would highly recommend you to watch it. Okay, so now let's see how we can create a pipeline in Microsoft Fabric. So as you can see here, I am inside the Power BI workspace. We have already enabled the Fabric to this workspace in the last video. So now I'm currently using the trial version of Microsoft Fabric. So each user can use the Fabric trial version for 60 days, which is completely free. Okay, so for creating the pipelines, what I'm going to do is, in the bottom left, I'm going to click on the Power BI icon. So as you can see here, these are the different components of Microsoft Fabric. So for creating the pipelines, we can click on this Data Factory component, which will switch to the different workspace UA specific to Data Factory. So here we have two options. One is Dataflow Gen 2, and the other one is data pipeline. So we are going to use the data pipeline to create a simple copy data pipeline. So I'll click on this option. So after clicking that, we need to give a name for this pipeline. So I'm going to give a name called first pipeline in fabric. Okay, so now we have given the name for this pipeline. Let's click on this create button now. Okay, so now we have created a pipeline. As you can see here, this workspace setup is very similar to Azure Data Factory Studio. So we have a separate workspace to create pipelines, activities, and all other ETL stuff with this data factory component. Okay, so now as discussed before, using this pipeline, we are going to copy a file from Azure Data Lake. I have another tab open here. So as you can see here, I have a storage account called Mr. K Demo SA123. Here I have a container created called test. And inside this container, I have a file called sample.csv. This is the file that we are going to copy to one leg data storage using the data factory pipeline in Microsoft Fabric. So now let's see how we can refer to the Azure Data Lake location in Fabric and other configurations in the pipeline. Okay, so I'll go to the Fabric again and now we need to create a copy data activity here. So as you can see here, we have the copy data option available in the home page itself. You can quickly create using this option Otherwise, on the top, you can find a tab called Activities. So if you click on that, you'll be seeing different activities supported in Microsoft Fabric. So almost most of these activities should be familiar to you as most of these are also available in Azure Data Factory as well. So here, I will click on this Copy Data Activity and after that, you'll be seeing an option called Add to Canvas. So if you click on it, then the activity will be added to the workspace. So let's click on it. Okay, so now we have created the copy data activity. So now let's configure this. Most of the options will be pretty similar to the Azure Data Factory one, but there are some differences. So let's see that shortly. So firstly, let's change the name of this activity to copy CSV. So after that, we have the two important tabs here, which are the source and the destination tab. So firstly, let's go to the source tab. In the source tab, we need to create a connection to the data source where we are trying to copy the data from. So here we have an option called data store type, where we have three different settings, which are workspace, external, and sample data set. So we can use the workspace option if you're trying to copy the data from this workspace itself, which is like inside the fabric itself. And then we have a sample data set where we could use a test data set for copying the data. So then we have external option, which is used when we are copying the data from the external data source. So in this demo, we are going to copy the data from Azure Data Lake, which is also an external data source, right? Hence, we should be using this external option here. After that, we have an option called connection. This is to create a new connection to the data source. So let's click on this new button here to create this. As you can see here, there are wide varieties of data source connection supported in Microsoft Fabric. Here we need to choose the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. And after choosing that, let's click on this continue button. So now we need to give the connection details for Azure Data Lake. So this is similar to the link service connection that we create in Azure Data Factory. Okay, so now the first option here is the URL. If you see the format of this URL, it starts with HTTP 
and then it has dfs.windows.co.net in the example URL format. So we can get this URL from the Azure Data Lake. So if I just go to the other tab and here I am inside the test container. So in the bottom we have an option called properties. So if we click on this, we have a URL here. So let's copy this URL and go to the fabric and paste it in the URL text box. So before pasting, just have a closer look into the URL example format. It has dfs.core, right? So I'm just going to paste the URL now. As you can see here, we need to do a small change. So this URL have blob.core, whereas the example one has dfs.core. So let's remove the blob and replace it with dfs. Okay, so now we have given the URL details and the next one is the connection. So we need to create a new connection for our data source. So let's click on this create new connection option. So after giving that, it is asking for a connection name. So let's give a name called source data lake. So after giving the connection name, we need to specify the authentication kind. So this is basically to specify in which authentication mode you are trying to connect to the data source. So there are multiple options here, such as organizational account, account key, SaaS token, and service principal. So in this demo, I'm going to use the organizational account as an authentication method. So what does this organizational account authentication mean is, so I have logged into this Fabric workspace using a user account, right? If the same user account is also having access to the data source, in this case, which is Azure Data Lake, then we can use the same user account credentials to authenticate with the data source. Say for example, I'll go to the Azure Data Lake. In the Data Lake, if I go to the Access Control, and if I click on this role assignment, as you can see, the user Kumar SR has storage blob data contributor access to the Data Lake. So this Kumar SR account is the one that I'm currently using in the Fabric. So since this user has access to this data lake, I can use the same user account to authenticate to the data source. So for that, let's click on this sign in button. Here I will choose the Kumar SR account to authenticate the connection. Okay, so now we have created the connection for our data source. So let's click on this OK button. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the connection here that we created now. So let's test the connection with this test connection option. So as you can see here, the connection is successful. Okay, so now the next one is to configure the path of the file that we are trying to copy. So for that, let's go with the file path option here. And in the file path, we need to browse and select the file from the source. So for that, let's click on this browse button. Here, let's choose the sample.csv file and click on the OK button. So after that, in the bottom, we have a file format dropdown. So by default, the binary is selected. And since we are copying a CSV file, we need to choose the CSV as the file format here. So let's click on this drop down and choose the delimited text, which is the CSV format. After choosing that, we can click on the preview data option to view the CSV file. So as you can see here, we have just three records here. Cool, so let's close this now. Okay, so now we have configured everything on the source tab. So let's move to the destination tab now. Okay, so in the destination tab, firstly, we have the data source type here as well. We have two options, workspace and external. We can use the workspace option if you're trying to copy the data inside this fabric itself. And you can use the external option if you're trying to copy to a different location other than fabric. So since we are going to copy the CSV file to one leg data storage, which is inside the fabric, I'm going to go with the workspace option here. So in fabric, we have multiple data store type available, such as Lakehouse database, KQL database, and data warehouse. These are the different types of data store type available in Fabric. But the most interesting part here is, even though these are different types of data sources, but the underlying data storage is still the same, which is one leg. So that's the coolest part of using Fabric. Here we have one storage solution. On top of it, we can store our data in different bases with respect to these three data sources. So here I'm going to choose the Lakehouse database for this demo. Okay, so after selecting the Lakehouse database, now it is asking us to select in which Lakehouse database you need to copy the files. So since we did not create any Lakehouse database before, we are seeing nothing in this dropdown. So let's create a new one using this new button over here. Okay, so we need to give a name for this database. So I'm going to give a name called test underscore Lakehouse. 
So let's click on this create button now. Okay, so now we have created a lake house database with the name test underscore lake house. The next option we have here is root folder. So this is used to specify the file that we are trying to copy should be stored as a table format in the lake house database or in the file format in the lake house database. So if you're going with this table option, then you need to choose the table from this drop down. So as you can see here, there is no table available here since we just created this lake host database. Also, I noticed that there is no such option like auto create table, similar to something that we can do using ADF or Synapse. So instead of going to lake host database and create the table with the required schema, I will go with this file option here to copy the data. And later, let's see how we can load the file to a table format inside the lake house database itself. Okay, so after selecting the files, now we need to specify the location of the Lakehouse database where the data should be copied to. So for that, let's click on this browse button. As you can see here, it's empty since it is a brand new database that we created just now. So I'll go and click on this OK button to copy the file to the root location itself. After that, we need to specify in which file format we are going to copy the file in the one lake. So let's click on this drop down. As you can see here, there are wide varieties of data formats supported in the lake house database. So here I will choose the parquet format, which is the most efficient one for data storage, which helps in fast retrieval of the data. Okay, so we have filled everything required in this destination tab to perform this copy data operation. So now let's run this pipeline. So before that, let's click on the save button here to save all the changes in the pipeline. Okay, so now we have saved all the changes. Let's now click on this run button over here to run this pipeline. So the pipeline is currently running. So let's refresh and wait for the pipeline to finish. Nice. So the pipeline run has successfully finished. So if I click on the details button, you can clearly see that we have copied the data from Azure Data Lake to Lakehouse database. Okay. So now what I will do is I'll go to the workspace and click on this my workspace. As you can see here, these are the pipelines, Lakehouse database, and other related things that we created now. Okay, now let's go to the Lakehouse database to check if the files have been copied correctly or not. So for that, let's click on this test underscore Lakehouse, which will take us to the workspace specific to the Lakehouse database. So using this workspace, you can view and query the different tables and files available in this database. So if you remember something, we copy the data as files to this Lakehouse database in Parquet format. So inside this files directory, we have our sample.parquet file, which is copied from Azure Data Lake. So if you click on this file, you cannot preview this since it is a Parquet format. So to view this data, what we can do is, we should load this Parquet file to table format. So for that, what I'm going to do is, I will click on this three dots near to the file name, and we will have an option called load to tables. And I will click on this new table option. So here we need to give the name of the table. So I'll go with the default name as sample and click on this load button here. Now what will happen here is a new table name sample will be created and it will be loaded with this parquet file data. Okay, so now it has successfully loaded the table. So I will just expand this table folder. And as you can see here, we have our sample table created. And if I expand this, we can see the schema of this table. So to preview the data, we can just click on this table. So as you can see here, we can now view the records in the table. I think now you have an idea of how to create a pipeline in Fabric and some information about the Lakehouse database. So this is just a simple copy pipeline task. In the future videos, we'll be exploring more about Fabric. So that's it for today. So if you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers, bye.